Hi everyone, I'm Rosella Rago from Cooking with Nona, and today we're going to be making some pesche alla crema, or Italian peaches. Now some people call these Italian peach cookies, some people call them Italian peach pastries, I just call them peaches, <laughs> and uh, we're going to be making them out of a sponge cake, an Italian sponge cake, so that's where I think the confusion comes about, and we're going to fill them with an amazing pastry cream, and then we're going to dip them in an Italian liqueur, and we're going to roll them in sugar, and actually we have some very real peach leaves today to decorate these with. So I'm just going to go over the ingredients super quickly. We just have for the sponge cake some eggs, some sugar, some baking powder, and double zero flour. And then we're going to fill it with a pastry cream. If you want the recipe for my easy custard cream, my easy pastry cream, we have a link below. I did a video on it. It is quick and delicious and like butter. And then the star of this show is the liqueur that you dip the peaches in. This is al kermes, and a lot of people in Italy call it like bagno per i dolci. It means it's a dip for uh, sweets and pastries. And this is a typical liquor used in Italy. It is actually from the region of Tuscany, the, the Tuscany area. And this is actually the classic liqueur that most bakeries in Italy use to make pastries and cakes. It has a flavor that is really unique. It kind of tastes like, um, if, you, if you're Italian-American, this is where you're going to understand me, there's a soda called San Viterina that is bright red just like this, and it's carbonated, and you would probably find it where you would get Quinotto and all the San Pellegrino sodas, and it's a little bit bitter. So the liqueur kind of tastes like that. Now, I'm going to break the news to you that this is nearly impossible to find in the United States. I don't know why. I don't know why they don't bring it here. I think it's delicious. I love the pretty red color, but you can't find it. This uh, was sent to my family by a friend of my dad's. Obviously, he didn't send a very big bottle, and we're not happy about it. So what are you going to do? Um, so I saved the last few drops of this to make uh, the peaches for this show, so feel special. But if you don't have this, because you probably won't find it, I suggest if you got that Zia in Italy, that Comara, that Nonna, you know, on the other side over there, you know, make her work for you and make her smuggle in a bottle of El Carmes next time she comes over. Just stick it in the dirty underwear in the suitcase. They'll never find it. But what you're probably going to do is use an alternative that is available in the U.S. Like Aperol, Campari, or if you're making them for children, grenadine. If you're making them for big children, grenadine and rum. But uh, Campari and Aperol are probably going to be your closest bets. Campari does have a much stronger flavor than the Aperol, so I do like the Aperol just because for an overall effect, it's not too strong, not too sweet, and the color is still very pretty. So these are probably going to be what you're going to end up using unless you're very lucky and somebody brought you the Alcatraz. Go for the Alcatraz. So let's get started on making our sponge cake, our pan di spagna. This is my nonna's recipe for pan di spagna. I'm going to start with our whole eggs. Oh, and again, for the full recipe and the complete list of ingredients, head to cookingwithnona.com. There's a link in the box. Thank you very much. Get our sugar going. Ooh. What happened over here? This is when you use your hands. All right. Now the basis for a pan di spagna, any pan di spagna, any sponge cake, is to whip the eggs and sugar uh, until they have ribbon. So that's what we're going to do. Going to start a little bit low. And then we're going to crank up the speed for about uh, not always says 15 minutes, but when you see ribbons, sometimes it happens at 5 minutes, sometimes it happens at 7 minutes, sometimes it takes 15 minutes. What do you want me to tell you? Let's just crank it up, and I'll let you know when we're back about how long it took. Okay. 
So these are our beautiful ribbons. And now we're going to just add in our baking powder and our flour. And I'm going to put this mixer on low now. Just until it's combined. You don't want to overmix this because then your cake is going to be soft and nobody likes that. Okay. Beautiful thick batter. So now I'm going to pull out my half moon pan and this is going to create the shape of the peaches. Now this is a silicone pan. I love this thing. This is non-stick by itself. You can spray it with something or grease it if you'd like. You don't really need to. And that's why I like this. Just an important point, when you bake with this, you want to put a baking sheet under it so it doesn't fall or anything. And I am going to put one quarter cup of batter into each of these. Just because I don't want it to be too, too full and this way they all come out the same size. You can also use an ice cream scoop for this. Okay, so these are going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 18 minutes. Now if your oven runs a little bit hot, you shave a few minutes off. But for the most part, you're going to bake them until they're golden brown and nice and springy in the middle. And don't worry if they seem a little bit soft when they come out of the oven because they will firm up as they cool down. So we are going to bake these and I will see you when it's time to do the fun part, decorating. So these are out of the oven and they have completely cooled and we are ready to start assembling and decorating them. Now you see they baked up with this little dome, this little cupola. Well, we're going to cut that off because we want two nice straight uh, halves to make our peaches. Just going to go in. And cut it like that. I know the tops are the best part, but it, they won't be as pretty. So don't throw these away by any means. I mean, save them, zip them in cream, zip them in extra alcatamas if you have them. They're really the best part. I know when we're done here, my dad's going to eat all of them, so I can't throw any of these away. So I'm just going to trim the domes off the rest of my peach halves. This also works best with a serrated edge knife, you know, like the Nana knife, I'm just saying, you know, works best for this kind of thing. I love the little brown spots on each of these because I think it, it really helps mimic the actual colors of peaches because peaches are not all one peach color. They have different tones. So I think the little different colors on them, the yellow, brown, it's going to be all such a pretty pink color once we dip them. It really makes them look like peaches. There you go. So now we want to make room for our pastry cream. So I'm just going to go in with my fingers and start hollowing out the one half of this. There you go. Don't throw those away either. I'm sure somebody will eat them if you leave them around enough. Okay. All right. So I got all my peaches cored, so to speak. And now it's time to fill them with our custard, our pastry cream. Now the filling for, uh, for Le Pasquet varies from region to region. So you don't have to make Le Pasquet La Crema. You can make Le Pasquet Al Chocolato uh, with a chocolate cream, with jam. You can make Le Pasquet La Nutella. I'm a fan of that, always. Um, but I think the, the Pasquet with uh, the pastry cream is the most classic, beautiful flavor. So don't be cheap with the, with the filling because you're going to want this to, uh, when you put them both together, you're going to want it to kind of uh, poke out on the edges. So be generous. That's also going to help in a more like realistic peach appearance. Beautiful. Put this right over here. Now we're going to unite our two halves. There we go. 
Doesn't that look amazing already? And these are going to be bombs. Okay. Ah, oh, gorgeous. And number three. Looks amazing. And I'm going to get the alchemist. I'm going to see how much I can get away with since we have, you know, limited quantities of this. My dad told me, don't use the whole thing. So I'm going to try, but the peaches need it, they need it. What do you want from me, Vita? Okay. So funny story about alchemist. It is from the region of Tuscany. It's been around since the Renaissance. And kind of a fact that's like not so sexy that people don't really want to know about is that alcatamus used to be, I don't know about now, but it definitely used to be made from a small little insect called kermes, and that's what gave it the, such a beautiful scarlet red color. Now, I don't know if they still do it like that, and I don't want to know, but I know that this is delicious, so whatever. Again, this is the time to call whoever you got over there and be like, I want you to send me this. Don't send me any more gum. Don't send me any of the brioches or anything. I want the alcatamus. So, Okay, so we're going to go one side and then one side, and then they're traditionally rolled in sugar. Now, you're going to dip these, and then you're going to let them hang out and rest for at least 30 seconds each because if you just go from the alcatamus to the sugar, it's going to be way too sugary, and it's not going to be cute, and it's not even going to be pleasurable to eat that much sugar on the outside. So trust me, let them just sit for a little bit. Okay. The beautiful color. Oh, my gosh. Grab it from there. These actually absorb really, really quickly. And grab it from there. You don't need too, too much. Okay. Get any spots you may have missed. Okay, and look at that. I did it with even a little bit extra left over. <laughs> so I'm going to dry my hands off a little bit just because I'm not going to roll them entirely in the sugar. I'm going to pick some sugar up with my fingers, and I'm going to just drizzle, drizzle all over it and get a nice sugar coating, a nice light sugar coating because especially on uh, – this side like that. That's all they need. The only part that I suggest actually rolling is the middle part so the cream gets nice and like packed in. There we go. Ugh, how pretty does this look already? So cute. So now I'm going to grab just a little paper cup. See, this is like a cupcake paper. And you're going to place them just like that. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Drizzle right on the outside, turn it over, and the middle part I'm going to roll. This way, it's not too, too much. And if there's still like some cream sticking out, just pat it with your finger. Number 
too. Okay, now these look absolutely beautiful. They just need one more final touch before they're really peaches. Now, these are leaves from an actual peach tree. You don't have to use real peach leaves. They have the wafer ones. Um, I've used basil leaves before. They look really pretty. But these are real <laughs> peach leaves because my dad's friend, Chidiaco, agreed to give us some from his very own peach tree. So thank you, Chidiaco and Rosetta. You guys are wonderful. And what better thing to complete the look of Le Pesque a la Crema than actual peach leaves? I'm just going to put one in each of them. Or maybe two. We'll do two. Ah, so pretty. And how beautiful do these look? Ah, the real peach leaves really make them look like they just fell off a tree. These look amazing. They smell incredible. Not exactly like peaches, but peaches with alcadmus in it, so better. <laughs> and they will taste amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to make pesca la crema. I'm Marcella Rago, and I'll see you next time.